It's the Happy Families Podcast with Dr. Justin Coulson, the podcast for the time-poor parent who just wants answers now. We're Luke and Susie, a husband and wife radio team and the parents of three young boys, and today we're talking about bedtime when you're on your own. A question from Elise today, Luke, is a little bit devastating. It's a bit heartbreaking because it's parenting in a way that none of us expect to. We always go into parenthood expecting that this is a team game. Um, But Elise has found herself in a difficult situation, has written through to the show looking for some advice today. She says, I'm a widow with three kids. They're seven, five and three. How do solo parents or those doing night routines on their own get their kids to stay in the rooms at bedtime when you can't divide and conquer to say goodnight? She's procrastinating from going to bed and staying there. Ouch. To answer that question, somebody who's a little bit wiser and more experienced than us yes, is Dr. Justin Coulson, who is once again joining us. Justin, this is a pretty difficult scenario for us to address because there's no light-hearted, whimsical of this. Here's a mum in the worst-case scenario after having three kids to lose a husband. Yeah, and and so young, seven, five, and three. I I consistently say I don't know how single parents do it. Uh, It's just such a tough gig, especially with young families. And I have to be honest, I don't think that there are any easy answers. I mean, I wish I could just pull this solution out of my pocket and say, well, this is all that she needs to do. But it, it kind of doesn't work like that. I mean, there are, there are things like priorities and organisational skills and having a good routine. But at the end of the day, if you try to put that three-year-old down and the three-year-old won't go to sleep and the five-year-old's messing around and the seven-year-old's trying to be the mum or be the dad, and I mean, it's just... It's it's rough. Yeah, and you can only imagine. I mean, all of us feel tired at the end of the day and when it comes to doing the night routine, how much do you want to just put the kids in their room, turn the light out and say, just... Go yeah, to sleep. Yeah, or you give them an iPad and just <laughs> yeah, set, send them just away. set them off. But but it, I mean, there's payoff and reward, obviously, in taking the time for the, the cuddles, the reading, the story, the tucking them in, the saying good night. Uh, but what if it's not working? What if even after that they're still just getting up and up and up? Yeah, yeah. Again, no easy answers. Uh, in this situation, I often <laughs> offer some reassurance that this will pass. Uh, but, but there are a couple of things that we can do that could at least be a little bit practical and a little bit helpful. I think that one of the most helpful things that we can do is give the seven-year-old some, some gentle responsibility. So maybe the seven-year-old can read to the five-year-old or the seven-year-old can have a, a job to do that they actually really like that makes them feel important and big and good. And that kind of at least takes care of that child. Let the seven-year-old know that because they're a bit older, they get to stay up half an hour later and I'd really be focusing heavily on consistency in that sleep routine. So the three-year-old is obviously going to be the first one. Maybe the three- and five-year-old together, they can both go to sleep at, let's say, for example, 7.30, mm-hmm. which means that dinner is cleared away by 7. They have their bath until 7.15. They brush their teeth, and then they hop into bed, and they're ready for sleep at 7.30. And you put them in your bed. Read them that story. Spend that really special time with them, just giving them big hugs and, and keep them together. Once they're asleep, you can move them to their own beds You know, at, at 8.30 when you've dealt with the seven-year-old and put the seven-year-old to bed as well. But really, routines. Uh, Kylie, my wife and I have found, and again, it's a different scenario. We've got the two of us, mm. but with six children, life can get pretty complicated. Yeah. Uh, we've found that the answer to the universe and everything, the solution to marital bliss the solution to family well-being and happiness is dinner at 5 30 that's i can see i'm pro that i we there are times when our kids were younger and we did that it fit everything in the bedtimes and the bath times and all that stuff just fit yeah the later it got the harder it was to, yeah. to fit now, the routine now, in. now let's be really clear most families can't actually do dinner at 5 30 work because times. of work commitments and and if you're a single mum uh, it's probably going to be even harder to do that. There are so many other ways that we have to try to juggle and get this happening. So, so a couple of my other practical solutions that that are probably completely impractical and laughable for anybody who's really dealing with it, but they're the best that I've got in a messy, complicated, icky kind of world. Um, spend your Saturday or your Sunday with some friends doing a cook-up so that you've got three or four meals prepped for the week. So that on Monday when it's chaos and Wednesday and Thursday when it's absolutely crazy, you've got those meals there in the fridge, all the veggies are chopped, all the meat's cooked, everything's ready to go. You've just got to reheat. You'll save money and you save time mm. and you can still actually... Yeah, you know, so, so and the seven and the five-year-old are well old enough to be involved. Even the three-year-old's got tasks they can do in the kitchen to help. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And, and, and bring them in. I mean... 
we don't want to burden them and make it awful for them, but let's let's make it fun. Let's play some music. And, and maybe that's probably the last thing that I would say. You're feeling heavy. You're feeling exhausted. You're just lost so much going on. But if we can lighten the load a little, if we can make time for laughter and for dancing and for music and for genuinely enjoying and connecting, making those mornings and those evenings nurturing and magical at least a little bit of the time, the burden does become lighter. It sounds to me like most of what you've said in a practical sense is, is about creating space in the time that right now might feel burdensome and stressful, that, that you know, if they go to bed a little bit later or a little bit outside of the rules of what is normally best practice, they're, not only is mum grieving, but so are, these, so are these children, create space for that to be okay, for it to be different. Sure. We still want to have some routine. We don't want to be too flexible, uh, but, but we don't want to be too rigid either. Yeah. A routine is key. Bringing in support is critical. Setting up systems, like I said, on the weekend, doing that extra cooking, yeah. and th- that kind of thing will, will be a lifesaver. And then having the discipline to follow through, actually making it happen. Wow, that's, that's the hardest part. I mean, I guess a, a big part too is if you are hearing this story and you know somebody in your world who might be in a situation that you can say is equivalent in some way to that single parent, widow, widower, then maybe you could be someone to reach out and actually offer some support to Take say, how can, I, yeah. how can I help? And whether it's a meal or whether it's a babysitting or whether it's a give the, the parent a break to actually take this prompt. If this isn't you, then step in for someone who the story is about. I just, I'm so glad you said that. I love that. Wouldn't it be great if we lived in a world? I, I saw a video a couple of years ago about a, a lady who was part of a church community. She had a, a terrible debilitating disease that meant that, she was in a wheelchair during the day and she actually couldn't get into bed at night. Uh, this was an ongoing issue. It was never going to be resolved. And her church community actually came to her and said, we have a solution. We're going to send two men from our congregation to you every single night for as long as we need to, even if it's the next 20 years. And they're going to help you out of your wheelchair and into bed each night. And, and what a lot of the men were grumbling and going, oh, grumble, 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 fear, I can't believe I'm going to do this. And, and they, they started to talk about how it had changed their hearts. And they actually looked forward to that opportunity where they could go and connect with this lady and do this service. If you know somebody, what a, what a great thing to do. How yeah. wonderful. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful wrap up of a very difficult story. And uh, our prayers go out to the, the family and, the, and dealing with the grief that they've got. Thank you, Dr. Justin Coulson. We appreciate your time. Wish we could do more. But I'm glad that I hope that's helpful. If you've enjoyed the podcast, we'd love for you to get onto iTunes and leave a rating and review. You can click on the stars and leave a comment. Like Mella Floherty did, who said, wonderful parenting resource. Dr. Justin Coulson's podcast, books, videos, online articles, etc. the list goes on, are such wonderful resources for parents who want to encourage positivity and happiness. Using the latest evidence, he communicates ideas in a way that is easy to understand and with a respect for how hard parenting can be. Definitely a great place to start if you're feeling a need to make some changes. Now that's a good review if you'd like justin to speak at your school or organization just visit happyfamilies.com.au 